Hey, welcome back to module two in your short course workshop on how to heal ADHD by rewiring the brain. Let's rock this module out because it's on the ADHD brain pattern, how it's wired, and I'm going to teach you that ADHD is a brain with the brakes on. So let's get started. Just to remind you, we've talked about the green zone. The green zone is a brain that has full neurological regulation. So that means it's able to get into the best speed for calm focus, and that person has control over their brain performance pattern. And if you remember, green's in the middle here, and when we see yellow to orange to red, it means that brain is using too much of a speed if we see the light to dark blues, it means that brain is using too little of a speed. So we have a green zone brain here, and I am going to show you an ADHD brain in just a second. But what I want you to, to remind you is that neurological regulation is green. It's in the green zone. Your brain is supposed to be calm. Your brain is supposed to be focused. When a brain is running too fast, then we have issues like anxiety, OCD, hypersensitivity, those types of things. When a brain is running too slow, these patterns are neurological dysregulation, and a brain with the brakes on creates ADHD types of symptoms, difficulty focusing, difficulty with distraction, difficulty with controlling one's behaviors, self-regulation becomes very challenging, the worse the pattern is. So we want neurological regulation in the green zone, and then when we get neurological dysregulation, we get symptoms. And specifically, a brain with the brakes on creates the symptoms behind ADHD. Okay, so just again to remind you what we're thinking about here, neurological regulation is a brain, down at the bottom, is a brain that can shift in and out of gears as necessary to create circadian rhythms across your day and across your life. So what that means is you're able to get into sleep when you want to get a great night's sleep, then you get up, you're able to chill, then when you go to school, you're able to get in the zone of calm focus. Then you're able to come home and chill, you're able to get your homework done, no problem, then you're able to get into bed and get a glorious night's sleep. When a brain is using a dysregulated pattern, it is stuck in a gear. It can be stuck too fast or too slow. ADHD is proven by science to be a brain that is running too slow. It's using excessive theta, slow brain speed. It's breaking of the brain. This makes it very difficult for people to self-regulate the worse the pattern is. Most times, people who have an ADHD pattern need professional treatment to be able to regulate that brain pattern. And I'll tell you why. ADHD is mostly an organic pattern that a person is born with. So it's not that the environment has created a situation that the brain pattern has created itself and then is perpetuating itself. That person was born with ADHD. So really when it's organic, truly organic like that, professional treatment is needed to back that brain pattern out so that the person can have greater self-regulation, which equals willpower and executive functioning, effortful control, emotional regulation, self-control and self-management. So I'll tell you more about that in just a minute, but it's really important for me to share with you that it's very difficult to decrease that ADHD pattern without professional help. Just so you know that up front, many people with ADHD can compensate really well by not putting their brain in a position where it has to be in calm focus for very long. So the people who do the best at compensating will make it so that they're able to have smaller time frames where they have to be in calm focus. So they give their brain plenty of time to recover and rest and to be in situations where they don't have to really be in that zone for very long. So, and I've already told you, diagnoses are neurological in nature, so there's science that proves that ADHD is a neurodevelopmental disorder. So you can look that up online, you can look on the National Institute of Health 
website. It's considered neurodevelopmental. It's coming from the neurological pattern. So treatment is necessary to be able to regulate it. Once you get it regulated, you can use a whole bunch of brain-based techniques and strategies and tips to keep it there permanently and to keep that positive feedback loop that we're going to talk about continually moving in the right direction for an upward spiral of consistent permanent change in the right direction. And that too is proven by science. So you can definitely use those strategies. All of this conversation is pertinent to you. Okay, so what is the ADHD brain functioning pattern? Proven by science, it's, it's considered a three to one theta to beta ratio. So here you can see that across most of the brain, there's three times too much of theta. So the true ADHD diagnosis is up in the frontal lobe of the brain in areas F3, F4, FZ in the middle are the areas that we typically think of the most. And of course, we can also include the prefrontal cortex. But I will tell you that Dr. Daniel Amen says that there's six types of ADD. And the way that he differentiates the types basically is by the area of the brain that is impacted by this theta to beta ratio. And you can look that up on his website if you're interested, because it is very interesting. So we see all types of ADD, but thinking about the classic ADHD type of brain, it tends to be more the frontal lobe, but many kids that come in have this pervasive global pattern across the whole brain. In addition to too much theta, sometimes it's coupled with too low of beta. So you can see how much of the brain here, especially the frontal lobe, is using one to two levels too low of beta perfect processing speed for focus. Some areas are three or more levels low. So the classic ADD or ADHD is too much theta, not enough beta, which creates this ratio. And I will tell you, this is like the classic pattern that we barely ever see on QEEG brain map, which this is an example of. This might be a person who would respond well to medication because the medication basically brings the theta down a little, not all the way, but a little bit while it's in their system and it bumps the beta up a little bit helping that person to function a little bit better. Most people that we see at Lee Brain and Spine who have ADHD also have excessive high beta, which gives them anxiety. So if they're given a stimulant medication, it makes their anxiety worse. It creates sleep problems and problems eating and it makes them anxious or nervous. So most people also have a high beta component to it, but the primary thing I want you to focus on is that ADHD is caused by excessive slow speed, too much theta. Okay, so up next, what we're gonna look at in this module, the next lesson is on ADHD behaviors and how they directly relate to the brain performance pattern that we just looked at. Follow me through to the next lesson.